Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see today it's all about the solo dice game. I already did a solo playthrough of the base game and the expansion heroes and villains but a new expansion is about to launch on Kickstarter and that's the Stunts and Allies expansion and the fine folks of Paul the Pin Games kindly provided me a preview copy of the expansion here. Apart from that they also provided me this awesome awesome leathery looking sorrow dice tray here which I will totally use in my playthrough and I also got the premium metal dice that were also part of the uh, original campaign and I think with the upcoming campaign for the Stunts and Allies expansion you can get those too. I'm not sure if I will be using the um, metal dice because there are also some um, let's say call it more standard dice uh, that you have to roll and then you have to mix and match but I'm pretty sure when you really get the proper version of the game when you buy the premium level you get them all in the proper uh, material here but I will definitely use the dice tray here. As I said they kindly provided me the preview copy here so take everything I say with a pinch of salt. Um, as usual I will not do a real review of this game I will simply play it. As there is nothing Thing really new or groundbreaking new for the solo mode I think I will demonstrate a three-player game here today um, because I really think the more the merrier in this game with the first expansion you can already play it up to eight the same is true here for the stunts and allies uh, expansion here too um, but it really plays well on all player levels so again I played it solo I played it two player three player and, and, and even more so it's really really a ton of fun and obviously it's really playing relatively fast. So I will set up the game so that we can immediately get started. Huh? The power of editing. Okay that's pretty much the setup for the three player game. There is no real change in respect to the amount of heroic feats here for example. So it's always four no matter if you're playing with two, three, four or eight players. In this case as we are playing with both of the expansions we now have eight piles for villains and scoundrels of the various color and the second expansion stands and allies also brings one villain and one scoundrel each so the replayab replayability increases with that expansion even more. There are also some additional common equipment, some premium equipment but of course the main addition to the game are those allies. At the start of the game each player draws one randomly and yeah there is a let's say a big selection of different allies in the game. They all come with somewhat let's say different um, start or not really starting but abilities that you can unlock throughout the game here for example the black wick whip <laughs> you have to unlock her special power um, basically bringing her up to level five you start with level one and there are various ways in order to upgrade those and when she reaches level five here when you fail against a villain fight them a second time really really a very powerful ability but they also come with some kind of a let's say penalty which is this symbol here so whenever um, the player with a black whip is fighting a scoundrel or a villain they have to come up with an additional blue die here. There are some ways to ignore this penalty there is something in the premium deck and the second edition are those stunt tokens here and you can use those stunts pretty much for rerolls. You can reroll up to three dice or you can even move to a different heroic feat after you have seen your first die roll. Really, really powerful stuff. And whenever you're upgrading your ally here, you're also unlocking some of those stunt tokens here accordingly. Um, those level fours and six, they will only provide you stunt tokens when uh, you're playing with, I think, four or six players respectively. As we are playing a three-player game, we will only get those stun tokens on the levels that are shown here and as far as I understood Brian told me that as part of the premium there is I think a double layer kind of board where those tokens then fit in relatively nice and I think you all they also come with some let's say blocking this or something that you sometimes miss that whatever you don't get stun tokens for a three play game on level four and level six here but I think we will be able to deal with that and Everything you see from the expansion is a prototype, so those things. So I think the cutbacks 
don't really 100% match the stuff from the base game but from what I understood this will be all sorted out during the final production. The stun tokens here are also not the production quality at least as far as understood and the stuff from the base game and the first expansion is the production um, version of the game anyway. Before I get started the game will launch or the campaign will launch beginning of May. Um, on Kickstarter, but I was basically we agreed that I'm doing this playthrough a little bit ahead of time, showing you some of the expansion stuff. But if you haven't heard of the base game before, of the first expansion, then you will also be able to learn this game with me again. I played this game on camera before, but there I really focused on the solo mode. So I think as things are a little bit different in a multiplayer game, I will explain you the game as I go. But it's really, really a very straightforward game, very f fast to play, very fun to play. Simply learn with me. The black player will be first. Um, doesn't really matter too much who goes first in this game. And you have now to choose to go to uh, one of those four heroic feats here. All those heroic feats come with a challenge. So those are the results that you have to roll. And they all come with a reward if you're able to yeah, beat that heroic feat here. In this case, it's the purse, for example, which is a very, very powerful common equipment. At the beginning of your turn, take a stun token. That's extremely, extremely powerful. And yes, that's obviously a common equipment that ships with the stuns and allies expansion, as there aren't any stun tokens in the uh, base game or the first expansion here. So I think in this case, yeah, I think Black will totally, totally go for to uh, try to recover the stolen jewels here. The artwork on those cards is really top notch, really, really beautiful to look at. And now all the other players can, or one of the other players can make an offer to um, accompany the, the Sorrow or the active player who goes there because they will also get a reward if they're able to be successful. And in this case, yeah, we try to recover the stolen jewels. There is no real order to follow, so everyone can shout in, hey, I want to support you. And typically you want to support the other players. Of course, you make it more likely that they get the reward they want to go for. Uh, but you also get a reward if you are successful. In this case, because this is such a powerful, powerful item, I don't think that the other players will actually offer um, their help. The ally from the blue player is not really particularly powerful, but their special ability is already unlocked from the start of the game. And this says force a player to help you in heroic feat. So let's say black is failing and blue goes to the same one. The blue could now force another player to help them on their journey. Now, Sergeant Garcia here. Um, but I think in this case, neither blue or red will offer their assistance because again, this purse is a very, very powerful ability. Okay, and then we are basically starting to roll some dice, which is always fun. And again, we are trying to meet those symbols here. We don't start with any um, things whatsoever. We will, uh, every, each player will start with a stun token, so we can already um, re-roll up to three dice with those tokens. So that's never a bad thing. And I think this is really a great addition to um, the game because when you play the base game, the first one or two turns seem to be a bit dull because you don't really know where to go to. But now with those allies and with those rerolls, I think this this definitely does make sense and, and helps the game actually. I really like that. Okay, that's an amazing start actually. Okay. Yahtzee style, we have up to two rerolls, but we already were successful in two here. So we are simply rerolling the other two and yeah, you can more or less keep what you want to keep. That's another blue. Okay, we need one more blue die. Let's see about that. And no, we were not successful. But again, we have the stun token. So I guess it really may be worth it to spend it now, because again, if we get the purse, we will get the stun token right back at the start of our next turn. So I guess let's totally go for it. And again, we can reroll up to three dice and we are looking for a blue and it's not blue, of course, me and rolling dice. OK, that's a bummer. We were not able to retrieve that item. Of course, all the other players are quite happy with the result here. Um, but this also means it was not in vain. So we are going back to our ally. But because we failed, Black is now allowed to level up their ally here in this case. 
And this means we have just gotten another stun token. As part of um, this expansion, we are now also allowed to place the second pawn from our ally to any heroic feat currently on the board. And I think black will totally place the ally here. And what this does is whenever another player is beating that heroic feat here, um, the players or the allies of the players that are present at that location will also be allowed to level up accordingly. So never a bad thing. And then we are moving over to the blue player. And yeah, blue is definitely, he wants that purse too. So we are moving in here. And because of Sergeant Garcia's special ability, we can now force another player to help you in a heroic feat, which we are doing. And in this case, I guess Blue is asking or forcing the red player to join him. And while we are here with her, Elena de la Vega, we will also have a look at her special ability. At the end of your turn, choose a player. You and that player draw a common equipment. Not too bad. That's basically a card that you would only use in a three or more players game. That's also the reason why I decided to demo this game with three players, because we can now use all of the cards as far as I can remember. So yeah, blue is bringing red with him. So let's roll some more cards here accordingly. And okay, that's not great at all. But again, we have now three more re-rolls because that's what the, let's say, additional player will provide or bring to the table. Um, they will also allow you to additional re-roll. But let's see what we get. Okay, that's amazing. Okay, that was successful. We really didn't need the second player, but I think I will still take it. So a lot of things will happen now. First of all, black is allowed to level up the black whip because another player was successful at that location. So that's another stun token and the black whip is already at level three. Nice. And by the way, if we are ever met meeting or making it up here to level seven in this case, we will also unlock an additional die, which is never a bad thing. Okay, that was that. Because red helped, she's allowed to draw one common equipment card from the deck. And that's the hook. Let's have a look at that. And that's also a card from the expansion. Interesting. I really shuffled those cards well. Use a stun token to draw a common equipment card at any time. Oh, that's not bad, actually. That's really not bad. And I think I have forgotten to give her her stun token here. Base every player starts with a stun token. Okay, that's really not a bad item, actually. That's cool. We, we will definitely keep it. But let's go for the main prize of the blue player. So they will all return to their respective players. Blue will get the purse here accordingly. At the beginning of your team, take a stun token. That's pretty amazing, actually. This one also goes to the blue player because this more or less drives the game. Um, we are really trying to get, or Blue will now try to get more of those yellow locations. And ideally we get up to three of those yellow locations because then we will be able to fight the villain of the yellow. And whoever beats the villain, there will only be one villain appearing in any given game, will be the winner of the game. And if there is a tie, there is a final duel, which is also fun, obviously. But in this case, Blue has started to go with yellow again doesn't really mean a lot right now but we will have to remember that especially all the other players we will reveal a new common equipment card that's the revolver use a stun token to force a player to help you or accept your help okay that's nice so you can really come with someone which is never a bad thing and we will also draw a new oh heroic feat and that's another blue one. And that's kind of a problematic situation right now because we have three blue locations out there, heroic feats out there, which means it's very likely that one of the other players, obviously, or most likely will be able to um, be able to fight the scoundrel. And whenever you get a second of any color, so let's say the red player would be able to gain two blue heroic feats throughout the game, she would also unlock that hero die which she would then roll until the end of the game. And then it's also likely that maybe she will be able to um, challenge the villain of the same color, because if she then would draw the third of the color, um, she would then be uh, fighting the blue villain. And the blue villain, yes, needs blue dice, obviously, or has a tendency for blue dice. So that's really a tricky situation now, especially or mainly for the blue player now because he is now invested into yellow but we will see about that um we can st 
still go for our uh, ally token here, the blue player. And unmask an imposter sounds like an awful thing because this card, this to increase your ally level by two. And that's pretty amazing too. Really a lot of amazing cards out there. So yeah, let's definitely place our ally die here. And then we are moving over to the red player. And I think, hmm, does she want to go there? She wants this here actually because she needs the green symbol because green's um, penalty or Elena's uh, penalty here is a green die. So we have to come up with an extra green result when we are fighting scoundrels or villains later on. So I guess that cape would make perfect sense. And now should we go for the hook already or not? I think not yet, no. So I guess we will go to the unnecessary swinging entrance. On the other hand, again, we are now going for red. Maybe, no, I think that's not the best thing to do. Yeah, she needs green, but if she also doesn't go for blue, um, she would help the other players. No, I think that's really not great. Hmm, the deed. Or maybe we will go here then. We will level up blue, but I think that's okay. I think that's okay. No, let's go for the unmask and imposter. I think that's right now the most powerful ability for her at least. This is great, but again, if there would be a second red card, then maybe she would have gone for, but with the three blue, that's kind of a problem. That's basically where the game gets also a little bit tactical. You really have to see what the other players are unlocking throughout the game so i think yeah that's that's the better deal huh, okay the other players might be willing to help her she doesn't need to accept other than yeah blue no blue is the other way around i guess they are both trying to help her at least black is offering her his help or her help oh, it's her her help because the black whip seems to be a female character so yeah, does she want to take black with her or not? I think yes, let's do that. So red will take the black whip with her. And then yeah, let's simply roll some dice. And again, I'm talking way too much. It's such a fast paced game. And ooh, that's not great at all. But okay, we will start here with a dagger. No, it's not a dagger, it's a, it's a what is it? I don't know. And let's continue. That's two green. I take those. So that's now the last normal roll. We need another thrust symbol here, actually. And there we are. Awesome. Okay, again, we didn't really need the other player to join us, but that's what it is. Again, same thing would happen. Blue will get an upgrade on his ally here accordingly. Though also unlocking another stunt token. Again, never a bad thing. Black is allowed to draw one common item card from thing, and that's a, a sack. And the sack allows to reroll grabs. So if we are rolling yellows, we would be allowed to reroll those. Those are really not bad cards either, actually. Those dice go all back, all the characters go back accordingly, and she would take this unmask and imposter, and will also go for the uh, memento. And we can discard this to increase your ally level by two. Let's do that right off the bat. One, two, this is unlocking two more stun tokens. And she also has unlocked this special ability. At the end of your turn, choose a player. You and that player draw a common item. And poof, in this case, I really don't know. I think she wants to use it right now because they are all early. Let's roll that J play die here. One, two, three is black and four to six is blue. One, two, three, it's black. So her and the black player will now draw a common item. And that's a hat, nice. So the hat always comes with the red symbol. That's not bad, actually. That's really never a bad thing. And then we have to draw another card for the black player. Ha, and that's also a hat. Interesting, but that's okay. Uh, and you, there's an item limit. You can have up to three common items and you can have one premium equipment and you can always interchange. So let's say I get a fourth one, I can then discard down to three. But that's pretty much it. We have to replenish the heroic feet. So those are some boots. Okay, that's a perfect item for the black player because the penalty of the black whip is um, to come up with extra blue. Though that's perfect. So let's see what the heroic feet. Okay, that's another red one. 
spark a revolution. I think that's not bad. Hmm. Interesting. Let's do that. Yeah, why not? Um, Black will go in here. And who does she want to bring someone else? She has a reroll. She has a charm. No, I think Black feels and she has two of those stun tokens. No, I think not. Let's simply roll those dice. And I think as of now, we really can increase the pace here a little bit. So we are looking for, yeah. Ooh, that's terrible, but we can re-roll grabs. So let's do that. Oh, that's actually pretty terrible. Wow, yeah, again, me and rolling dice. And I think I can continue to re-roll. So as long as it's showing yellow, I can continue to roll actually. <laughs> oh, wow. That was amazingly terrible. Yeah, let's, we have still two more rolls. I mean, it is what it is, right? Okay, here we have the first Z. I take that and we didn't roll any, <laughs> no yellows in this case. Yeah, let's simply take our third roll and then we can still decide if we want to use stun tokens or not. Oh, that's so bad. Okay, we can reroll those. Okay, here's another thrust symbol again. We can do those because of the sack. And yeah, we have another yellow. And that's another set. So I guess we have three dice now. So yeah, let's definitely spend that stump token. We are looking for one more thrust. And there it is. Amazing. Great job, the black whip. Perfect. Oh, I think I forgot to place the red guy here. Um, But red, oh, I don't think... Think, hmm. Yeah, that's really on me now. I forgot to place it. Um, I think she would have gone for one of those. On the other hand, Red also would have known she gets um, that this blue comes out. No, I think Red would have placed this one here. Most likely. Sorry for that. So again, this means Red is allowed to level up, but nothing will happen. So she moves to level four and there is no stun token. But again, she is alone. Um, which means she keeps this spark revolution, but she will also take those boots. So as of now, she will automatically roll a blue symbol. It counts like an extra die with a blue symbol. And that perfectly offsets the penalty of the black whip here. Perfect. Okay, that's a good start. Then let's see, that's a new item. Those are some glass. Oh, also perfect for the blue player because the penalty of the blue player's ally is an extra yellow symbol. Perfect. Okay, so we are placing it here. Oh, and it's also a yellow card. I mean, that's really double perfect for the blue player. So yes, black will totally, totally place uh, her token on there to level up her character because she know blue will go there and yes blue will totally go there and i think he really wants that symbol and he wants that card so i think he uses his special ability force a player to help you in heroic feat and i think in this case ah they're both pretty powerful actually but i think it's better to take black with her because black is already at her item limit of Three. And so she has to make a choice if she wants to join again. She not sure if she would have offered her help, most likely not. But again, Sergeant Garcia's special ability allows him to force another player to help you in heroic feat. What we are doing right now. Okay, let's roll some dice at the beginning of your turn. Take a stun token. I almost forgot that too. So he's now at three. But it's also not an easy thing here, right? I mean, yeah, we need thrusts and taunts in this case. And okay, here we have a taunt. That's at least something. We don't have anything else. No, we still have three more rerolls because again, we brought a friend. Okay, that's a thrust. I take it. That's the last normal reroll now. And that's another thrust. Okay, I think we are now using one of our stun tokens for normal reroll up to three. Oh no, that's not good enough. Do we want, I think, let's spend one more. Let's spend one more. We can do that. We can do that. Oh, come on. That's still not good enough. Are we? I think, yeah, we're spending the remaining token here too. And there's the set. Awesome. Amazing. 
Again, if he would have decided not to spend any more tokens, black would then be allowed to reroll um, the remaining dice one last time. But in this case, it wasn't necessary. It doesn't matter. Black still gets the reward, basically two rewards. The level up here on the black whip accordingly. So black whip is also at level four and black also gets an extra item here, which are those gloves. And actually, because she knows we will now see a fight against our first scoundrel and that scoundrel is a yellow scoundrel. And I'll explain that to you in a second. She will hold on to those gloves and I think, does she need the head? No, I think she, ah, I think she needs them both actually. Is this, maybe we are getting rid of this, but that's also great for this. No, I think let's get rid of the sack for now. We will simply discard this again. The item limit for common equipment is three, but that's okay. I think that's a good deal. So we have taken care of this token. We all go back. We have now successfully raided a government caravan here. And also we were able to grab those gloves. So we have a yellow symbol, but that's not enough because Blue was able to do something heroic in two yellow locations. It means Blue has now unlocked the yellow hero dice from the scoundrel deck accordingly. Which now means he will roll that die until the end of that game. And because it's the first die, we will draw our first scoundrel of the game. Because it was the yellow location, we are drawing a yellow scoundrel. And here we have money counter muscle, a scoundrel. And again, it seems it's, yeah, it's, wow, cool. It's the scoundrel from the second expansion here. You may not use stunt tokens. The problem now with those scoundrels is the player who more or less challenged the scoundrel will not be the first to really fight the scoundrel. So red will be now first in respect to fighting this thing. Of course, you know, it's a yellow scoundrel, so we need a ton of those yellow symbols here and all the other players do not really have anything specific to that. But again, we will try that anyway. So red will be first, so she will roll those dice. And I'm now really thinking of using the hook now for the first time. Use a stun token to draw a combat equipment at any time. And now it's any time. So yes, she will spend one of her stun tokens to draw an additional common item. And that's a sorrow, a torn symbol, the blindfold. Doesn't really help her right now, but okay, she will do that. In theory, she could go on, but yeah, let's not go too crazy. So she will be first. And again, we are looking for, let's bring that down here. Three yellow and a thing. We cannot use stun tokens anyway. So maybe she wants to continue to draw Use a stun token to draw a common equipment card at any time. So yeah, let's totally do that. So we will do that again to continue to draw. And that's a letter, re-roll leaps. And I think that's not a bad card. So I think we are now at three. So we will get rid of that hook right now and we'll hold on to that letter. So we can re-roll blues, which is not a bad thing in this scenario here. Okay, let's start to roll. Okay, that's... hmm. Not a bad start, actually. And we can reroll that blue here. <laughs> and wow, amazing, amazingly lucky. Okay, she still has two more rolls and a stun token. No, oh, she cannot use the stun tokens. I almost forgot. <laughs> no, okay. And then let's have the last roll and bam, she made it. That's insane. Okay, cool stuff. Which now means she gets the reward and the reward for a scoundrel is a premium equipment card and that's the bullwhip up to two sorrows you roll are wild okay that's an amazing amazing premium equipment that's really cool so yeah let's totally hold on to that and again you can hold up to three common equipment cards and one premium equipment card and yeah basically she has taken this away from all of the other players amazing job nicely done and it was also the blue player's turn still. So we are drawing the next thing. Okay, what is this? The grapple. Okay, a grab can be transformed into a leap. Okay. And okay, that's a green one. I think no one really needs green right now. And that a 
ability. Yeah, this ability can be okay for the Black Whip actually, but not so sure. Um, but it's the yellow, uh, the red player anyway, and I think, yeah, we want to go for blue. No, I think blue can still place that token here. Mm hmm, what? I think this is not so powerful. I think blue will place, yeah, yeah, the ally token there. Yeah, that's what it is. And I guess, yeah, red will go there, which means if she will be able to succeed here, blue will get an upgrade. And then we will roll some, or can, do we want to bring some friends? Will the others offer something? I guess not. That's something at some point in time, this will stop. Unless you really say, hey, I want now additional equipment because I suck or whatever. But in this case, I think no one will follow her. No, I guess not. So what does she have? She has a red one automatically because again, she has that hat. That's not bad. Two sorrows are wild. I think these are the tones, right? And yeah, and she can reroll blues. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's see about that. Okay, that was a terrible roll. She cannot even reroll that. Oh boy, that's terrible. Yeah, it is what it is. So we have to second roll. Okay, that's another red. I take that. There is no tone. Ah, you can, okay, she can reroll that blue here. That's at least something. And that's another yellow. Yellow doesn't help her, right? No, she has a third reroll. Or maybe second reroll. Oh, 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 are you kidding me? Wow, she is insane. She really is insane. So blue will level up to level three. Therefore, he gets also a stun token because again, of this token here. Perfect. Um, we, yeah, basically this was replacing that charm there. Those dice go back. She was alone, so no one else is getting something. So yeah, she was able to unlock the Persuade an enemy. She gets the D tier, uses stun token to return an ally token. So no, I think she will simply discard this. She was really after this second blue card, which means she will unlock the according hero dice and we will see our second scout. And in this case, it's the blue one or rather one of the blue ones. There are four now in this deck of scoundrels. And here we have the Rebvatos Assassins. Each time you roll two or more blue on a roll, choose one die to not use for the rest of your turn. Oof, that's a nasty one, actually. The thing is, black will be allowed first to attempt that. Yeah, and she has blue dice, actually. But yeah, again, the penalty here, but she has this offset from the boot. So that's pretty much a zero, which is okay. So black will go first. Um, does she have anything else? No, I think she does not. Anything what really helps her in this fight. Okay, that will be a tough one, I guess. Okay, that's a blue. We will take that. It was not two blues, so we don't have to... Yeah, we don't have to remove one die. So we will simply continue to roll. Okay, that's a set. Sets doesn't really help her at all. No, so she really needs two blue and one thrust. And those are the two blues. Um, hmm, but each time you roll two or more on a roll, choose one die to not use for the rest of your turn, which means she could now use her stun token, but she would have to do that with only two. I think it's worth it. I think it's really worth it. So... The Black Whip will spend that stun token to reroll two dice now and BAM! It's the thrust symbol. Are you kidding me? That's insane. They're really doing exceptionally well. The Black is allowed to draw a premium card and that's the gemstone. If you roll three of the same symbols on your dice, you may use them in place of two matching symbols. Okay, that's nice. So again, in this example here, if you're rolling three reds, this could be too green for example that's also a very very cool little card amazing we have to remember that too okay awesome so we have taken care of the next baddie here let's replenish the heroic feat it's a bracelet your ally gains a level when you successfully complete oh nice that's also nice but i think maybe already a little bit too late in the game i don't know let's see what the heroic feat is i think it's the black player actually yeah, who is next? This was the turn of the 
red player and she can still place her thing and I guess yeah I guess I guess we want to go down here because I believe that's where black wants to go to because she needs that red one here. On the other hand, black could now more or less play it a little bit more destructively and say, I will take blue away. But black is saying, hey, blue, you're already at two yellow cards. So it's your obligation to make sure that um, red will not trigger the end of the game just yet, maybe. So I guess, I think that's fair. I think that's really fair. So black will go in here. I think we don't have anything helpful at all here. Um, do the others want to join her? Maybe, maybe the blue player because he's down to only two equipment cards. So yeah, blue will offer his help and black can now decide if she wants to take it or not. She feels relatively confident, but the red one is really not bad for her. Let's roll that die. I really don't know. Um, we are rolling this die. On a roll of five or six, she will accept. She will accept. And it's a six. Okay, so blue will join her. That's nice. And then, yeah, she will start rolling some actual dice. So let's see. Okay, what do we need? We need green. That's perfect. And we need blue. That's also perfect. She has one blue from her boots. So we need one more green, but we have three more rerolls actually. So let's see about that. And that's the green we need. Perfect. Okay, she will stop here. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So she succeeded here, which means Elena de la Vega will level up to level five already. Oof, that's really something. We will take this away. Blue will get a common item here, and that's the chest which allows him to use two stun tokens to draw a premium. Wow, that's amazing. That's really amazing because right now he only has one stun token. And I think I forgot his special ability again, the purse. Yeah, but he's next. I think, I guess I forgot it once, maybe. I don't know, but let's try to remember that now. But again, Black was successful here. So she also unlocked the red hero die here from the scoundrel accordingly. And she will be able to take that cape. Does she want a cape or is she happy with what she has? I think green, no one went for green. So I think no, she will simply discard this. That's fine. Uh, but the next scoundrel will appear and blue can take it first actually. And that's the Bayou Buccaneers, which again is one of the expansion. I really shuffled those well, believe me. Before you attempt the scoundrel, reduce your allies level by one. Oh, that's, that's really bad guys. Okay, but nothing we can do about it, I believe. I think, can you choose not to engage her? But I think, yeah, let's simply still try that. So yeah, Sergeant Garcia will go down to level two. It is what it is, but blue is first now. And blue will be allowed to roll his um, yellow hero die here. It's typically more of this grab symbol, but again, they're also a set and one of those um, weapons here on this. So let's see. We need hmm, three red. Yeah, there's really not a lot he can do about that. Uh, but I think that was a pretty amazing roll, actually. <laughs> Wow, where are you when I'm playing Arkham Horror? Are you kidding me? Wow, <laughs> with his first roll. Of course, he lost this level, but I think I totally take it. So that's another premium item. This time it's for the blue player. And as far as I remember, the antidote gives you basically one of those. Not all four of those, but you get to choose basically one of the cards. Really a totally wild card. Again, it's a premium item, of course, so it has to be quite powerful, but yeah. That is quite powerful. That's really interesting. That's really, really interesting. This doesn't happen that often that all of the players will take that scoundrel away from the actual active player, but okay, nothing we can do about it. So that's some braces. Use all of your ally abilities, even if they are still locked. That's also not bad. That's really not bad. Let's see what it is. Okay, it's not. It's not a yellow card. He was really hoping for something yellow. And yeah, red can still place this. And oof, 
boof, boof, boof. In this case, it doesn't really matter too much, actually. So I guess he will place, or she will place that. No, it was not her. It was Black. Sorry, Black. It was Black's turn. So Black will place the Dobton Orphan here. And then it's Blue Player's turn. And yeah, at the start of the turn, he will get that stun token. But what are we going to do? This doesn't help either of them, but if he doesn't take the blue one here, red could end the game actually. And I think it's really important. So I think he will go here and he can force another player to join him there. So how important is that now? He will try that on his own. No, he will not take anyone with him. He still can use his hero die here. And yeah, I think it's not unlikely that he will be able to make it there actually yes okay well, let's see about that um okay that's a red we need okay that's a yellow we need he has a yellow from his grab and i guess we need another red right no we don't we really don't because we have the antidote here okay he was already successful and just thing i noticed i may have forgotten the penalty maybe for some of the players i really let's i really hope i didn't but okay it is what it is if i forgot so black will be allowed to upgrade her black whip to level five which unlocks another stun token for her that's really not bad so that has been taken care of we were able to take this item and this card here away from the red play i think that was the core piece i think we don't want to hold on to this revolver let's simply discard this let's simply draw another one and here we have a cape i think do we have the cape or oh, we had it somewhere i don't know and of course we have to go for another heroic feat and ah oh, you must be kidding me okay yeah it's another blue one which of course makes perfect sense for the red player of course uh blue will place his um ally token on top of that and yeah it's clear that red will go there i think she cannot force anyone to go there and again if she will now be able to take the third blue location so we are now claiming the second die this will trigger the end of the game because then the blue villain will show up but of course we have to succeed first the thing is she gets the blue dice here she can reroll blues because of that letter here i think this doesn't count for hero dice if i recall that correctly i could be completely wrong i don't know um, no one else is joining her, obviously. So, um, okay. What do we have? I think this reroll here, this letter, doesn't count for the hero dice, but I may be completely wrong. And no, I'm not. So we can reroll those, though. We have one set from that blindfold here. That's definitely good to know. But let's reroll those. And okay, we can continue to reroll those. And come on, okay, that's pretty terrible. But okay, we still have two more rolls. Okay, perfect. One, two, no, that's it. Okay, that's it. We are moving into the end game. We have the set here. Okay, that's now really insane. First of all, because we have now unlocked the third card from the blue location we will also unlock the second blue dice and yes it will be a blue villain that is now appearing i think blue will be able to level up but doesn't really help him at this point in time and then yeah we will see our first and also last villain of the game because again that's the end game and here we have valentina the spur okay we need a lot of blue symbols obviously you may only re-roll up to three dice on each roll okay that's definitely a mean penalty but now this is a little bit different compared to the scoundrels so we will place all our meeples or our little pawns on top of this and basically it's kind of a not really last man standing but everyone gets a chance to fight that villain now and whoever succeeds will be will stand upright all the others who do not succeed will be more or less removed from that card and if there's only one pawn at the end of this first round then yeah 
um, then this this pawn will win. If there are two or more which will or which are able to fight the the villain here successfully, we will all see a final duel between the survivors. So pretty amazing stuff. But in this case, I think let's simply start with the red player. She will roll a lot of extra dice. No one has unlocked the special or final ability of the ally. So didn't unlock the extra ally die, but okay, I think that's still okay. She can reroll blues, that doesn't help her, but she has a set, right? Didn't we have the set? Yes, we have the blindfold with her. And if you're rolling a set, we can also use it for a while. And I think those cannot be used for other abilities. You really need a physical die on those. Okay. Okay, that was pretty insane, actually. One, two, we are definitely keeping the hero dice because the probability of rolling this symbol on those is, is higher than that. On the other hand, we simply looking for one set, actually. So we have two more rerolls. So let's see about that. That's not it. No, it's not it. That's our second reroll. It's basically the last roll. And that's still not good enough. Okay, that's now really, really interesting. So we are basically giving away one of those. So we can reroll up to three dice and we cannot roll anything anymore anyway. And yeah, that's it. Okay, she was. Oh no, we had it already. What am I talking about? Of course we. <laughs> Had it already. We had that C here. Okay, forget everything I said. She was able to beat that um, Valentina here, which is, means she will be able to stand up. Next, we will place the red token on her, and I think she at least. Oh no, we needed one more blue, one more green, but we had green here too. That's her um, penalty when fighting the scoundrel or the villain actually okay then this was red now we are moving into the black player she will roll those dice she's allowed to roll her hero die she only has one and okay what do we need i think we need the set here that's perfect she has one blue from that and the gemstone okay three of those could be two. Oh boy okay hmm does this really help her in any way? I mean, we have a blue, we need then, I think, again, we can exchange those into two blues, right? So let's do that. Let's really do that. But I think we still have to lock those two symbols. So we are looking for one more blue die. Okay, that's interesting. No. And we still need one more blue for her because of her penalty. That's still something we have to remember. So she needs two more blue dice, actually. Last reroll. Okay, that's definitely not good enough. She will reroll her stunt. And again, we are looking for two more blue. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. She's also allowed to party with the red player here. Interesting. And then it's last but not least. It's the yellow, uh, blue player, apologies. So he's also making his attempt now. And yeah, it's not his turn, but he has at least this antidote here. So that counts as a blue. He's looking for one extra yellow, but he has that yellow here because of, again, of his penalty. And he has two stunt tokens and the red, no, not the red, the yellow die, sorry. Okay. Let's see. Okay, um, that's two blue. That's nice. So we have one blue here. And we're looking for a Z. Okay, that's not bad. But we can only reroll up to two dice, uh, three dice. So this doesn't really help him. So I guess we are giving away one stunt now before we roll those. So only three will be rerolled. Okay, that's a set. Let's hold on to this. Then we are spending the final stun token to reroll three more dice. And we are looking for one more blue, actually. Only one more blue. Yes! <laughs> oh, boy! Wow! They're all stars, and I really hope I haven't messed things up in respect to the penalty of the red player here. But I believe she rolled a green die. 
Okay, which means they all were able to make it here, which now means we are going into a final duel. Really, I haven't seen this in a three-way, actually. Two, yeah, that's pretty common. That does, does happen relatively often, but three or even more, that's quite fun. And now we are rolling those dice again, and this time we are trying to only make um, those thrust symbols, so those um, weapons here. Uh, we will start with the red player because she triggered. She still has two more of those. And now we are not fighting any more scoundrels. So again, we are only counting those symbols. So that's one. That's a set. Um, up to C's are wild. So that's another one. Okay, she can roll two more times. Okay, one and two. I think she might be able. I think she has one more roll actually. And then she will take her. Yeah, I think. She, oh wow, and the last stun token here. Oh boy, so that's one six hits. So she inflicted six hits. Mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely something I have to remember. Then it's black. Um, black will roll the same thing, but only with the red die. Okay, uh, yeah, these are the stuff from the blue player actually. Okay, that's one. That's definitely not great. And that's oh, zero. And also, we didn't roll any three of a kind. No. And okay. So basically, she's already out. We know that. So, oh, no, that was red. That was black. Okay, that's a bummer. And then it's the blue player. And again, blue will roll the yellow die. And yeah, we are looking for. Yeah, we can roll six actually. Okay, that's two. Not bad, not bad. Um, two more times. Three, not bad, not bad. And last time, and no, bam. This was not successful, so boom, they are all dead and gone, which means the red player and her ally, Elena de la Vega, were successful. Not only beating the villain, but also beating or outsmarting all of her fellow sorrow players in this game and that's pretty much how you play the sorrow dice game with both of the expansions i am pretty sure i have missed the penalties and some other special abilities here and there apologies for that but that happens when you play three players at the same time but i think you still have a fair understanding of what this game is again the majority of the stuff you have seen is already part of the base game what has been added uh, with the first expansion with some more scoundrels and villains which make the game a little bit more um, different from each time you play so we will not always fight the same villains and scoundrels and again from the second expansion that is about to launch on kickstarter you have seen those allies and the stun tokens which especially the stun tokens really are an enormous help in this game this is really something when you're rolling a lot of dice you should have the possibility to somehow alter the results to some extent either through felt by using worker tokens which will allow you to add one or two to those dice um, or uh, basically giving you some rewards and that what pretty much happened in the solo dice game here with the stunts and allies expansion again a huge shout out to all of my patrons really do appreciate all your support if you want to support the channel you will find a link to my patreon patron um, it's somewhere in the description it should pop up during the video are having some technical difficulties of late to add those link but you will find it somewhere you can join my community here on youtube by clicking that little join button like and subscribe everything helps and yeah hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye